What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome to my longsword build for Sunbreak. Now, while longsword itself is a fantastic weapon capable of doing insane amounts of damage, many call it the weeb weapon of choice. Uh, unfortunately, it's a weapon that I'm just not very good at. I have tried multiple times. I tried an Iceborne and World. I tried all the way back in For You. I tried an Eyes. And for whatever reason, I'm just not very good with Longsword. Like, I understand it mechanically, I understand how to do the counters, but something about executing it properly, uh, I just, like, I can't get into the rhythm of it. I guess that's a good way to describe it. Regardless, though, the build we have today does insane amounts of damage, uh, absolutely shredding monsters in the hands of somebody that knows what they're doing. This would easily be, like, topping charts, I bet. But let's talk about the build. So attack boost 4, crit boost 3, wex 3, max might 3, quick sheath 3, some windproof, speed sharp 3, wire bug 3, grinder sharpness 3, 2 points of crit eye, 2 points of protective polish, a stray point of razor sharp, some flinch free for multiplayer, and of course, bloodlust. So, jumping on back to town, let's talk about the talisman, talk about the weapon, the build, the switch skills, all that stuff as always. And if you saw the greatsword build, you already know what we're working with here. It is the grinder sharpness talisman. Now this would be the God Tally variant of it, two grinder sharp, two protect polish, four one one. Uh, ideally, though, what you need to have to make this particular build function is going to be two grinder sharp and a one slot. As long as you have that, you can get by just fine. Uh, if you have two grinder sharp, a two slot, and a one slot, that's going to be even better because you'll be able to get at least one point of protective polish in there, which will help out, and I'll explain why later. Uh, but you're going to need to have a talisman with two points of grinder for this build. It has the same rarity as getting like a 2x2 slot, so it's not incredibly rare, but we don't have decorations for Grinder, and because of that, it's basically limited to gear choice or talismans at the moment. Now, moving on from there and talking about the weapon, uh, when I was putting this together, a lot of people were mentioning the final boss longsword, and you know, final boss, guys, Magorm, hands down, best longsword in the game. Uh, I'm here to tell you it is not. Uh, it has 10 less raw and 10 less affinity. Sure, it has a ton of purple sharpness, but it's easy to mitigate that with things like protective polish. Uh, and on top of that, because we can use grinder sharpness with Tigrix, it completely blows Abyssal Flicker out of the water when you consider that damage buff. It is a very significant damage buff. It's an extra 10% attack. So not only do we already have higher raw, we're going to be getting 10% more on top of that higher raw which puts Desperate Roar way ahead of the competition. Now, at the same time, you can get this as soon as you're done the final boss, which I would suggest doing. It is a fantastic longsword. But as you start doing anomaly hunts and you get the parts, Tigrix is going to be the clear winner in the end. Uh, now, going on over into decorations. Your sword, obviously, you're going to be running an anti. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. Switch it out for whatever you're up against. The antis are king, giving you a nice flat damage boost against your target. Snowshear headgear, picking up the third point of grinder sharp to attack boost, and then of course we have a level two slot, which we've dropped in some wirebug whisperer. Down here we have the Baryoth male, picking up some quick sheath, some maximum might, some weakness exploit, and some flinch free. Baryoth vambraces, completing our quick sheath and max might, along with two points of crit eye to help with the negative affinity on our longsword, and we've slotted in a crit boost and speed sharp. The Rathalos coil. Picking up two points attack boost, three points windproof, and then two points crit boost with the crit jeweled in. And then last but not least, the storage greaves. Where we have two points of wax, and of course we pick up our bloodlust. In the talisman, we have a wire bug plus four along with two grinders. Uh, we have one grinder here, and of course you could change that brace out for a grinder, which is why I said ideally having a two one on here would be nice, uh, but at least a one to make sure you have three points of speed sharpening. Now. Uh, there are some variants to this build. If you want to get even more damage, you could run the uh, Arc Fiend. The Arc Fiend, I passed right by him. There we go. Uh, the Arc Fiend is going to allow you to have Weakness Exploit, Dereliction, Resentment, and an extra level 2 slot. It's a fantastic piece of armor. At the same time, we don't really have the room to fit Malzino into this build. Uh, we could potentially do Malzino on the waist, but I mean, then we're, we're losing points of attack boost and crit boost. Uh, if we go and we do Malzino on the helm, we're going to be losing our sharpness. So, actually, we don't really, it would be the chest. So, with the chest, we're losing quick sheath and max might. Whereas with the waist, we're going to be losing attack boost and crit boost. So, because of that, I really don't like running the Arc Fiend because I don't like doing dereliction without having some source of healing that I can pull into the build. 
uh, making it kind of a non-competer for the longsword. I mean, you could do it, it's just going to be incredibly risky. Now, if you don't like Bloodlust because you think that's too risky, there's an even safer variant of this. Uh, you could swap on over to the Snowshear Greaves, which are functionally identical to this. They both have a two slot. That one has Stamina Thief. This one has Latent Power. Uh, but they both have Grinder to Attack Boost and then a two slot. So swap to those Greaves. And then over on the Helm side, you could run either Luna Garen, which will give you two Crit Eye, two Two, and Whisperer. Or you could run the Kaiser, which will give you three Crit Eye, Crit Boost, and then the level one slots. So it's really going to come down to preference. With the level one slots, you could, of course, work in Stun Resist. Uh, personally, I think having one point of Whisperer, it's, it's like a go-to on everything I do now. I love having Whisperer. So it really comes down to uh, the user. But the point is, there's a couple different ways that you could adapt this build uh, based on your level of comfort with things like Dereliction or Bloodlust. Or maybe you don't want to do any of that. Maybe you just want to play it safe, how we did with the Sword and Shield build. So talking about the switch skills, um, we have two sets here where I mix things up a little bit. On this set, I'm going to be running the Spirit Reckoning combo and Tempered Spirit Blade. On this set, I'm going to be running the Round Slash combo and Silkbind Sakura Slash. Now talking about some Drawn Double Slash, hands down, no reason to not use this. It's just extra free Spirit Gauge. Uh, as for Spirit versus Round Slash versus Reckoning, this is going to be preference. I like Reckoning a lot. I really do. Uh, but I just, I miss it so damn much. Every time I try using Reckoning, I end up missing the monster. So because of that, I usually end up falling back to Round Slash, even though this can do more damage. Sacred Sheath compared to Special Sheath. Special Sheath's fun. Sacred Sheath is sexier. This is the new kid on the block. Now, this thing has a ton of mechanics to it. Uh, the idea is as you are sheathing, if you have Gage and something attacks, it instant counterattacks for you, which is OP. If you let go of your sheath early, you create a guard point, and if that connects, you can build gauge off of it. Or if your gauge is full, you can absorb three different levels of your spirit gauge to unleash a big old sacred combo that will do a ton of damage. That's what you saw me doing in the opening of the video. And there's actually kind of a lot of nuance on how this is executed, so I'm going to have a video pinned in the comment and in the descriptions by a guy named Kazu. Did an excellent job breaking this down and, and how everything works with the Sacred Sheath. I'd highly suggest watching that video if you were trying to get used to Sacred Sheath. Before I watched it, I didn't even know the difference between the counter and the guard point. I thought that sometimes I was just doing things different. I didn't know what was happening. Uh, so, definitely... There's nothing wrong with that. It's just as valid as it's ever been. Uh, Sacred Sheath's just a lot of fun and it's new and shiny and that's how we're doing it. Now, with Sacred Sheath, because this becomes our spender, we no longer need to use Soaring Kick. Soaring Kick's still good. It did get a nerf in Sunbreak, uh, but it is still good. Regardless, we need a Builder, not a Spender. So, that leaves us with two choices. Silkbind Sakura Slash or Tempered Spirit Blade. Uh, this is a fast one cost that you will pop it out. Instant counters, builds gauge. It's fantastic, uh, but it's another counter. You know, we're, we already have counters on our Sacred Sheath. We already have counters on our Foresight Slash. Do we really need a counter? That's that's up to you. Uh, Silk Bond, on the other hand, I fell in love with this back when it was in Rise, and I never got to use it because everyone was like, you have to use Soaring Kick to deal your damage, and I just like it a lot. So I'm using Silk Bind as my builder on this, and then over on the Red Scroll, I have Tempered Spirit Blade, so I can swap between them depending on the situation. Uh, but, you know, just go with whatever you prefer. You're going to want one of these as the builder because this is a spender, and we're going to be spending on Sacred Sheath Combo. Uh, Serene Pose I never used in Rise anyway, so I took it off here. And we're using Harvest Moon, which I also barely use. The way Harvest Moon works is anytime you do a counterattack, it's going to do bonus hits. So it's literally just free damage, but it like creates a big old wire bug ring around you. Uh, if you get knocked into it, it throws you back in like a wrestling ring. If you sheath your weapon, it cancels and it goes away. Uh, but it's, it's a little bit interesting to work with. Honestly, if you're really good at hitting counters, there's no reason to not have it. It's free damage. If you're like me and you just kind of accidentally press the button at the right time, you're probably not going to be using it too much. So with all that being said, uh, let's eat. Let's do a hunt. I'm thinking uh, we'll do like a Mizu. I'm, I'm pretty good at reading Mizu's moves. At least I think I am. Do I get my shifter? Yes, I do. It's the thing with longsword. It's like it's not that I'm I'm bad at longsword it's just that longsword when i see players play longsword that know what they're doing it's like a dance and i cannot replicate that dance i'm like the person that's tripping over his own feet on the dance floor trying to pull it off so i don't know let's do the hunt we'll see how it goes
Where are you? Do, 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 do. Oh, right next door. Okay. Uh, and we got some good stuff here. So as a reminder, the way Grinder Sharp works is we need to go up to sharpness levels. So the idea here is we just play normal with our longsword. When we get down to blue sharpness, we sharpen it, and then we get a 10% damage boost for 90 seconds. Uh, which also, that is why we are going level 3 on this and level 2 on this. Because when Protective Polish runs out, that gives us 30 seconds to burn through sharpness uh, and get us closer to, to being able to do what we need to. Which, in fact, you'd probably be better off just with one point of Protective Polish, considering we have even more that we got to get through than we did with the Greatsword. Huh? Come, come over this way. I thought there was like a wire bug down here, and there's seemingly not. Come here. Side slash there. I did not pull it off. But there's a wire bug right in here. Yes, there is. Come to me, my baby. Oh, shit. Got the knockdown early and I knocked him away from the goodness. I love Mizu's theme. Two whiffs. Well, if you can ever actually hit the ability, it'll do a ton of damage. Right, now we're going to sharpen. We're going to get our damage boost. And this one we're going to hit. It's, it's almost comical, man. Like, I mean, I did, I did say, I said I'm not, uh, not very good at the, the dance that is longsword. That's the thing. Like, someone that actually knows what they're doing with this weapon would just be like, foresight slashing and countering constantly. Instead, you have my dumb ass that's just spamming Silkbind Sakura Slash and trying to hit a counter. So that was the auto counter there.
There we go. Finally got one. Like it's a really cool playstyle, and like I want to get good at it. It's just, I think part of the problem is longsword is one of those weapons that I think like it requires time, it requires time and dedication to get good at, because there's like all the different counters and knowing what what to do, which counter when, like there, um, and more often than not, I'm just not, you know, I don't spend enough time focusing on one weapon. I think that's the problem for me. God, dude. No, oh, screw it. I was hoping to to open up on it with a, a big sleep, but we'll just do a um do this, I guess. I also should have mentioned, you get iframes when you do that. Well, not iframes, you get hyper armor. So when you unleash that, you're just pumping out damage. this way. to the trap. There we go. Not bad. So, that was, uh, that was what? It was sub 10. And like I said, I am not good at longsword. So, somebody that actually knows what they're doing with this would probably be getting, like, sub 5. Because, I mean, I missed, what, did, did, I missed two or three of my Sacred Reckoning combos. Uh, I did, like, almost zero counter attacks. Like, that's just, I mean, if anything, this is a testament to how good the build is, because if somebody that's terrible with Longsword can beat Mizu in under 10 minutes, I mean, you know, God. Somebody that knows what they're doing with the Longsword is just going to go out there and obliterate with it. So, either way, go, my viewers. Have fun, destroy things with the Longsword, and I'll catch you next time.